Hello, uh, I'm Andy Caldwell. I'm a senior principal engineer at AWS. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the session, Introduction to Aqua for Amazon Redshift. So today we'll talk about the status of Aqua, what was announced, then we'll spend the bulk of our time digging into how Aqua operates so you understand how Aqua can accelerate your Redshift queries. And finally, we'll discuss the type of workloads most impacted and the Aqua roadmap so you know what to expect in the future. But let's start with some context and look at how data warehouses are traditionally built and how this impacts how they perform. There are really two contrasting architectures for a data warehouse. One approach lets you leverage fast local storage in each compute node, taking advantage of the speed of that local storage, but this can limit scalability. Or you can run directly off shared network attached storage, which gives you the cost efficiency of multi-tenant resources and the flexibility to easily scale, but can be bottlenecked by the network. And of course, there are various hybrids that compromise between them, but our customers keep telling us how much they really value Redshift's industry-leading speed, and so we knew we needed a new approach that would support everyone's ongoing rapid data growth and preserve the speed of the locally attached storage. That's why we invented Aqua. Aqua combines the best of both approaches by moving the high bandwidth data operations, the scan and aggregations, down into the storage layer where they can be run against local data in a multi-tenant cache that sits at the top of Redshift's managed storage. It enables the speed of local storage with the scalability and cost-effectiveness of multi-tenant storage. When we started designing Aqua, we looked at the trends in hardware over the past several years, as well as the types of operations that are most important in modern analytics. And what we observed motivated us to build something that's a bit different than what we'd seen before. See, data sources, SSDs in particular, are getting faster, much faster than CPUs are getting faster. Uh, 12x for SSDs over the past seven years versus just a 2x improvement for CPUs. And for a variety of reasons, that divergence is going to grow over time moving forward. We're not the first or the only company to notice this. The buzz around computational storage is driven by exactly this observation. But AWS is well positioned to take advantage of these trends and deliver not just a storage component or a piece of the solution, but a complete system that truly benefits our customers because we engineer whole systems across all layers of the hardware and the software stack. So looking at these trends, we felt like to truly get the benefit of the fastest SSDs available, we'd need to not just execute scan and aggregations against data in locally attached storage, but to leverage hardware accelerated processing that sits right next to that storage so we can perform analytic computations as fast as the data can possibly be read. And that's Aqua for Amazon Redshift. It's a new distributed and hardware accelerated caching layer for Redshift that provides the next phase of performance improvements and innovation for analytics at the new scale of data. Aqua enables Redshift's RA3 nodes to execute queries at up to 10x faster than any other cloud data warehouse and it is 100% compatible with Redshift because your Redshift cluster is still driving and still manages query execution. On December 1st, we announced that Aqua is available for anyone to preview and that will be in production in January. So Aqua acts as a push down and scale out computational storage layer that sits below your Redshift cluster. Aqua caches your hot Redshift data, but it's not a traditional cache because it isn't used that way. Uh, instead of a get or a block fetch interface to move data from remote storage to your cluster where it might be executed, which can create a bottleneck in the network, each Redshift compute node sends the data reducing parts of your queries, the filters and the aggregations, to the Aqua nodes where they are executed. This is a part of query execution that's well suited to this type of approach. Scans are easily parallelized, which enables the fan out. Uh, and scans and aggregations are data reduction operators, which removes the network bottleneck since we send back only the results. So to understand this more deeply, let's take a look at the life cycle of a query and see how Redshift leverages Aqua to accelerate the scan and ag portions, the, the parts of your query that demand high throughput. So there are four stages of the query life cycle, and we'll start from your Redshift cluster. Redshift receives a query through any of the ways you submit queries to Redshift today. Redshift controls security, authentication, and manages transactions exactly as it does today. Your Redshift cluster is totally in charge here. Just like regularly, it builds and optimizes a query execution tree, 
and it then examines that tree to discover which portions would be better executed in Aqua. In this case, we see a like predicate on the customer name column that's used to filter the other columns involved. That uh, scan would be sent to Aqua for execution. Redshift will expect to get back just the results of the scan, which it will later use to execute the join and complete the query. The Redshift decision here is based upon an analysis of the contents of the subquery, the predicates and the data types involved, uh, and other performance uh, considerations. At GA, Redshift is looking for scans and aggregations that contain like and similar to, and those are the ones it will choose to send to Aqua. So Redshift identifies an appropriate subquery, packages it up, and sends it off to Aqua. Aqua receives the subquery and distributes it across multiple nodes in the Aqua fleet for execution. The Aqua, uh, the Aqua routing layer knows what data was hydrated into Aqua nodes as part of a previous subquery execution, and it can direct new queries on the same or mostly the same data uh, to those same nodes to reduce the need for hydration and provide greater speed up. One of the ways Aqua is able to accelerate scan and ag subqueries is by leveraging the ease with which those operations can be parallelized. And so Aqua fans each of them out across an entire Aqua fleet. Then each Aqua node independently executes its part of the subquery. The Aqua nodes themselves are custom hardware designed ground up by AWS just for this purpose. We leverage AWS Nitro chips to accelerate encryption and compression, and then we built a custom analytics stream processor in an FPGA as well. That processor directly handles the most common scan and ag operations up to 10x faster than you can do on a CPU. To do this, we had to make changes to almost every level of the stack, from the hardware itself, to the device drivers, uh, low-level data handling software, to the execution code that runs in Aqua nodes, to the attachment into Redshift itself so that we can provide seamless query execution. So each node re receives the subquery. It hydrates any uh, needed data from S3 that wasn't already cached. It maps the operations in the subquery across both the custom hardware and the CPU to optimize performance within the Aqua node. And then it streams the data through those filters at unparalleled speed. The processing speed of the Aqua nodes, combined with the scale-out ability of Aqua and the impressive performance of Redshift's RA3 nodes, is what uh, allows customers to process the largest cloud data warehouses at up to 10x the price performance of anyone else. And so finally, after the Aqua nodes are done executing the scan and AGs, just the results of the subquery are encrypted and then send, sent back to your Redshift cluster. Since the operations we've just pushed down to Aqua uh, are data reduction operators, the filters and the aggregations, the data returned is typically much smaller than the data needed to produce the results, on average about 20x smaller. This data reduction is what eliminates the network bottleneck and further offloads the processing that needs to be done in the Redshift cluster. Once the data arrives back at the Redshift cluster, Redshift resumes execution starting from the Aqua results. Joins are handled in the Redshift cluster and the rest of query execution is unchanged. All your existing Redshift management utilities, uh, query queues, uh, query rules, cursors, materialized views, those all work just the same. And that's how Redshift leverages Aqua to improve query performance. No code change or schema changes are required from you. <clears throat> and Aqua is free with Redshift's RA3 16XL and RA3 4XL nodes. And when we get, went to build a multi-tenant computational caching layer, it was super important that security was baked in from the very start. So all data, including all of the metadata about that data that is cached in Aqua is encrypted. Aqua doesn't cache or store the keys, just the encrypted data itself. If your Redshift cluster is encrypted, then we use the same per block keys that Redshift does. Those keys are actually generated and they're encrypted with your customer managed key. If your Redshift cluster is not encrypted, we create a key for you and use it to encrypt the data that's cached within Aqua. This means that as soon as you delete the Redshift cluster or you change your customer managed key, the data that was cached in Aqua is forever unencryptable. And you can find more details about uh, Aqua in, and its security in the online Redshift docs. So we announced that Aqua is available for anyone to preview, and I'm super excited about this. The team's been working on this for more than two years uh, to be able to bring this to you. 
So to try out Aqua, please fill out the preview request form and we'll get back to you quickly. Uh, when you get a response from us, you'll launch a, uh, an RA3 16XL or 4XL cluster or use one of your existing ones in the supported uh, preview regions. And Aqua will be enabled already by default. When Aqua goes into production in January, it will be enabled via a cluster level switch on the Redshift console. Aqua is super easy to use. There are no per query or per table settings for you to manage. You just flip the cluster switch to on. Uh, as, the preview, as of the preview and the GA, Aqua will be automatically leveraged only for scans that include the like or similar to predicates. That's what Redshift is keying off of to decide it should send this subquery down to Aqua. And we selected those specifically because they provide the highest degree of performance improvement from Aqua. Traditionally, these predicates are very CPU intensive. There are you know, limited forms of regular expressions and they can be a runtime bottleneck. By accelerating some of the most complicated uh, and CPU intensive but flexible predicates, Aqua can enable workloads that were formerly just too challenging. Many BI applications leverage, leverage these particular predicates. Things like customer sentiment or extracting keywords from string, string columns are now much faster with Aqua. And this enables workloads on your data warehouse that may have seemed impractical before. And this is the starting point for where Redshift will leverage Aqua, but it is definitely not the end. Over time, we will expand the set of situations where Redshift pushes work down to Aqua. And as we do, no changes are required from you. Because your Redshift cluster makes the decision about what to push to Aqua, we'll update Redshift's pushdown logic as Aqua's role expands, and it will automatically take effect on more and more of your queries. In addition, Aqua's caching abilities will be applied to Redshift features like concurrency scaling and data sharing and pause and resume, eliminating the need for Aqua to rehydrate in those situations and providing an immediately fast performance. I hope this has provided you with a deeper understanding of how Aqua accelerates Redshift queries. I encourage you to sign up for the Aqua preview and we look forward to accelerating more and more of your Redshift queries as we go into production in January and then beyond. Thank you. And as always, please remember to complete the session survey.